Hi, this is Eddie Hearn, and you're watching Lights Out. Um, this is Fessel Khan for Lights Out. Uh, with me via Zoom, delighted to be joined by Jez Smith. Uh, Jez, good evening to you, mate. Happy bank holiday. Um, how are you doing? I'm all good, thanks, mate. Um, not too bad. Uh, how are you? You all right? Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Thank you very much for asking. Um, how's your bank holiday weekend been for you? Yeah, really nice. You know, I've had a nice uh, week's rest when I got back from my fight. I had a nice uh, bank holiday, so, um, you know, um, all nice, relaxed. I uh, had some time off, and now uh, all, all system goes tomorrow when I start camp again. Did you uh, manage to catch up with the boxing over the weekend? Um, yeah, I did. I watched a little bit of it. Um, didn't get to watch it all. I was, uh, I was a little busy, um, so... Uh, no, it was uh, it was quite eventful. I quite enjoyed uh, the main event. I was uh, I quite enjoyed um, a bit uh, here and there. I don't really. It was a tough one to score, you know. Um, I probably had Parker edging it. I know a lot of people thought uh, Chisora won, but um, I think either way, 115, 113 was probably right. Um, I don't know where the. Uh, the judge who scored it, um, 117, 111, didn't he? I think one of them. Um, I don't know where they got that from. But um, no, it was a good main event. I think the undercard was good. Um, so yeah, can't, uh, thought, it, thought it was a good card. Yeah, it was. It was a really uh, good weekend of boxing, obviously. You had Sonny Edwards win the world title on uh, Friday night. Then you had that blockbuster card, Manchester yeah. by... Um, Andy Ruiz's turn, so it was it was a good weekend of um, of boxing, and obviously, as you mentioned, the um, the main event had a controversial decision towards the end. Everyone's got a different opinion on it, but it is what it is. That's the sport of boxing for you. Um, just obviously want to rewind back to a few weeks ago out in Spain, Barcelona, your fight against uh, Kerman Leharaga. Um, just obviously before we go in towards the whole stoppage issue uh, what was your thoughts of your performance up until that that the stoppage itself um i thought it was a if i'm honest i thought it was a very good performance up until obviously what happened um i thought you know i come out very nice and uh calm and composed i was, I was popping my jab out really well in the first few rounds and obviously you know for me it was uh when i caught him with them shots you know, I was in a little bit of shock that he hit, to be fair, that he hit the floor as soon as I hit him, like with a clean, like a clean shot. I was a little, is that still there? Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so I was a little bit shocked, but other than that, you know, I, I knew, I, I did say before um, that I could see weaknesses that I could expose and, and, and that's what I did, you know, but other than that, I thought the performance was really well. You know, the sixth round, I got caught with a, with a big body shot, um, don't get me wrong, I was hurt from it. And the seventh round, I come out, and you could see I was still like trading punches with him. I stopped using my jab a lot um, in the seventh, which I should have been popping a lot more because, you know, in them earlier rounds, that, them rounds between one and five, when I was popping that jab, it was, uh, he didn't kind of know what to do. It was a bit like he was trying to come inside and I was closing the gap and then I was getting behind my jab. And that's when, in, them, in that sixth and seventh round, I stopped using my jab, it was... Uh, not not great you know I, I shouldn't have been i should have been really popping it constantly but i was taking that seventh round to recover um you know because i got caught with a big body shot in the six and um then obviously the referee decided to i don't know <laughs> i really know what to say jump in and, and call it enough <laughs> um you know i think you know you can see from what everyone said over social media and everything that that the stoppage was definitely Shouldn't have, shouldn't have happened when it did. So, but you know what? I, I've been saying to a lot of people in a lot of interviews I've been doing, you know, we could sit here and we can uh, complain about and keep going on about and keep going around in circles, but it's not going to change what's happened. You know, at the end of the day, for me now, it's about being professional about it, getting back in the gym, working hard, and then hopefully, you know, Eddie can stick to his work, get the rematch, and then obviously I can put things right. Jez, up until that um, 
up until the referee did decide to step in, on a scale of one to ten, how hurt was you? In the six, I was probably in the sixth round from the body shot. I was probably a good like eight out of ten hurt from that shot. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna see as how it wasn't. You know, it was a it was a it was a cracking shot. It took the wind out of me. You know, I'm I'm glad it came at the end of the round. Um, for me, going out in the seventh, I was recovered. I wasn't I wasn't hurt still, and that's me being honest. But I obviously knew as well that I needed to take that round to get my head back. You know, um, I knew my second win then was going to come because I know the sort of camp I, I've had. You know, I've had a great I had a great camp. I had a long time. I had a long time to get really fit, and and you could obviously see from when I was on the scale, the, the condition I was in, I was in great condition, and probably the best shape I've been in through my career. Um, so I knew I had them later rounds in me. So that's why I was a little bit, you know, I was very frustrated and, and, and upset about obviously the outcome because I didn't get to prove to people that I have got them later rounds in me because obviously you've seen with a few of my fights that I seem to gas later on and, and people are probably going to assume that now from now on. So for, for me, it was to prove to people that I have got them late rounds in me. I can push through it. So, you know, the seventh round was for me to just take take that recovery. I, I knew I was up on the scorecards, you know. There, there's no doubt and anyone can say that I wasn't up on the scorecards, you know. With the two knockdowns, you know, I, for me, I probably I won the first. Well, I thought I definitely won the first five rounds, and especially with the two knockdowns. Um, and obviously, if the referee done his job properly, then... He wouldn't have got the 30 seconds to recover when when I put him down. And obviously, you never know the outcome. I truly believe I would have got him out of there. But even if you don't and you say the referee warns him the first time and then on the second time gives him a point off, he's still another round behind. So I knew I was up on the scorecards and I knew I just needed to take that seventh round to recover and then uh, like completely recover get my second win, and I knew I could go again. Jess, going into that fight with you, obviously you were the away fighter um, over in Spain. Did it not worry you that something like this could potentially happen with you being the away fighter? Um, to be honest with you, I didn't really like look into it like that, you know. At the end of the day, being a fighter, you don't expect to... Uh, like being in a way if I go into someone's backyard and seem to get turned over like that. Like it wasn't just like, it's not even like you could say, you know, the judging was bad. Like in my eyes, I got completely like robbed. Like at the end of the day, yeah, I wasn't, if you watch it back, I wasn't taking punishment in that seventh round. Like I was punching back with him. Yeah, I got caught with a few shots but this is a this is boxing do you know what I mean you're gonna get hit and you're gonna take punishment and you know at the end of the day if he was gonna step in when in the seventh I got hit with a couple of shots before this the thing is it was I got caught with one shot before he actually stopped there when he stopped there I think he hit me in the back he might hit me in the shoulder or something and then I went to throw him back and then he stopped it so if you're gonna stop it for that why did he not stop it when I put Kerman over and he was near enough out on his feet on the special the second knockdown and then I think or even the first knockdown when I ran at him and started hitting him and then obviously he was taking punishment on the road so if you're going to step in you might as well step in for that like at least that's half a reason to step in with my one it seemed like he see one or two it's like he wanted a reason to step in um but like I said uh, you know we can keep going around in circles about it but it's not going to change anything now. Not only was it in your fight that the referee was criticised, also in the main event, um, Sando Martin versus K Prosper, there was a few times where the referee stepped in and um, sort of, you know, well, disrupted K Prosper's momentum at certain points in that fight. Um, and obviously, covering Twitter that night of the actual show out in Barcelona, the most referees picked up quite a bit of criticism. Uh, throughout that show do you think this will worry more British fighters about perhaps going into different countries into different people's backyards knowing that they potentially could come across a referee that might just 
play a massive part in the actual result. Yeah, it, it might do, but you know what? It's it, it's about I don't know. I, I don't think it will stop fighters from going over to somewhere because it's all about opportunities and and you know getting on them, taking them opportunities when you can. So I don't know. It might do. I think. I just think it ruins boxing a little bit, if I'm honest. You know, it kind of just takes the sport away a little bit, you know. Just for, with things like that, you just feel like you've been cheated and, and kind of in a way you feel like you put all that work into a training camp and you expect to get a fair crack and it kind of gets taken away from you when you don't get a fair crack. Do you know what I'm saying? As you mentioned, um, your schedule back in camp as of tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You've spoken to Eddie Hearn. Um, and he's given his word that a rematch will happen. Are you open to going back to Barcelona for that rematch or has it got to be a case of where Carmelo Haraga has to come over here and fight you this time? Um, do you know what? Like, I don't care where it is, you know. Uh, It'd be nice to be in England. It would be lovely to be in England. He did say that he would come to England. But, you know, if I have to travel again, as long as I've got a mutual um, referee and judges, then I'll be happy to do it wherever, you know, as long as there ain't Spanish ref, Spanish judge, Spanish judge, Spanish judge. Do you know what I mean? And I'll, uh, I'll be happy to do it wherever, you know. I truly believe next time I fight him, I don't think he changes you know, like I said before, I think we've seen the best of him. He, you know, he, he does the same things. You know, I'm only getting better. Um, and next time, I'll make sure you won't get off the canvas at all. When can that rematch take place? I mean, have you been given a rough date of when we could potentially see that rematch? No, I haven't been given no date yet. You know, I've kind of had my time off. I've had my week off to, to rest and recover and... Uh, I have sat down with my manager and had a spoke, had a talk with him and uh, kind of we're now going to hopefully see see what Eddie says and uh, hopefully we can get some dates and uh, something penciled in and, and see see what happens. Obviously. You know, at the end of the day, if, if, if the fight don't happen with Kerman for some reason, then uh, I just, like I said, I just want to be in exciting fights and uh, I believe that I've proven that I am... It's a televised fire. I'm an exciting fire. People do want to watch me. You know, I think I proved that I can mix with these level of fires. So if they can't make that rematch, then I'm open to fighting any of the, um, you know, the top top 10 Brits and, and things like that. So I just want to be an exciting fire. And I believe that I can mix with these and I believe I can beat them. Um, so like I said, I just want to get back in the gym, uh, keep working hard, keep improving and, uh, See what happens. Now, there's a possibility that that fight with Kerman and Haraga might not happen. Obviously, you've got to always have a plan B. And as you said, you're open to fighting any of the top 10 in Britain. Which is the ideal fight for you if the fight with Kerman doesn't happen? Uh, I've really got an ideal fight. Any of them, you know. You, you, know, you see the other day a, a great uh, win for Troy Williams. Obviously, now he's mandatory for the British, so... You know, if he does, he'll probably end up fighting uh, Cheeseman. I know they're talking about um, Fowler fighting Fitzgerald, maybe. I don't know. But obviously, after Fitzgerald's performance the other day, I don't know if that'll, that'll happen straight away. You know, he becoming a bit heavy. So, you know, if Fitzgerald wants to, or wants, wants to tear up or, or a little go, then I'm, I'm more than happy to, to fight any of them, you know, that he might want to fight before thinking that before he fights someone else, before he fights Fowler or something like that. <clears throat> I know you've also got, you know, Sam Egginson, you know, you, there's, there's so many exciting fights out there. Um, I just want to be in the mix with, with any of them. So whatever sort of option comes or whatever opportunity comes and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's buy it. The 154 division, British domestic wise, there as you mentioned, there's so many fights being made, and there's so many names as well. You know, Anthony Fowler, Ted Cheeseman, Scott Fitzgerald, Sam Eggington, you know, Troy Williamson, Hamza Shiraz, Kieran Conway, who yeah. fights on the um, Billy Joe Saunders Canelo on the yeah. weekend. Can you see all these crop of names and obviously yourself actually getting 
in the ring with each other the summer throughout the summer because like I said the 154 British domestic division is one of the most exciting in boxing today yeah well you would hope so you know I don't know what their sort of uh what their sort of mentality is like, you know, you, you, I think they obviously all do want to fight each other. I suppose it's what sort of, I suppose for them as well. And for everyone is, is if the, if they're getting paid well for it and things like that you, you want to hope at the end of the day. Yeah. Me as a fighter, I look at it as I want, I, I don't want to be in these fights with these other fighters that are not, you know, that don't come to win and, you know, genuine or you no, know, I just want to be in exciting fights. I want to be in, Good British fights, and uh, ho- hopefully they can uh, they can make these fights happen between all of us and uh, make it exciting for the fans because the fans want to see these. Do you know what I mean? Like the fans want to see, you know, Cheeseman versus Fowler or Fowler versus Fitzgerald or Smith versus Williams or Smith versus you know Hamza Shrees or any of them. You know, people want to see these Shrees versus Williams. You know, they're they're exciting fights. They're all exciting fights. You know, like you said, you got. Kieran Conway, who's, who's fighting, is this Sissoko on on Saturday? You know, people want to see these exciting fights. His 154 division is, is very excited at the moment. So, hopefully, you know, that these promoters can make these fights happen. And uh, like I said, I, I think I proved after my fight with, with Kerman the other day that I, I, I belong in the mix with these sort of guys. So, I just want to, yeah, I just want to get, get back to the gym and uh, yeah, roll the dice again and, and, and be more exciting fights and, and keep proving to people that I, you know, I'm not this. I know sometimes my, my, my record probably don't do me any justice. You know, I've had a few losses now, but, you know, records are just numbers. You know, I, I just, I think I've proven, like I said, that I, I, I belong on, as a TV fighter and uh, I can mix with these sort of lads. And, and, I, and I really, truly believe that I can beat these lads as well. Well, there are definitely exciting times ahead if all these fights in this 154 domestic uh, level division can get made. So fingers crossed we're going to be in store for some pretty good fights over the summer. Uh, Jez, anything else you'd like to add before we bring the interview to an end? No, nothing I'd like to add. Just uh, thank you for, for your time and big shout out to all my sponsors and that's what has been helping me out. I've got plenty of them. You know, Insulation Hub and... Uh, Rapid Source Telecom, ESJ uh, Management, LMB, um, ASN. Uh, there's there's a couple more. You know, I just want to thank all of them for all, obviously the help they give me during camp and uh, yeah, it keeps me being able to you know take time off work when I do and and get ready for for these fights. Well said, Jeff. Uh, well, listen, thank you very much for taking your time out to speak to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, we'll keep a close eye on your Instagram, Twitter pages to find out when that rematch with Kerman and Hiraga can be announced. We'll definitely look forward to seeing it again and uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Jez Smith, thank you very much for talking to Lights Out, mate. Take care, mate. <laughs>